NASA just shocked everyone. Again. After years of betting on SpaceX's Starship to return humans to the moon, the agency is now reopening the race. Acting Administrator Sean Duffy says SpaceX has fallen behind in new contenders, including Blue Origin, Lockheed Martin, and even Dynetics, may get their shot. But here's the real question. Are these landers truly better, or is NASA losing faith too soon? Let's dive right in. When NASA announced it was reopening the competition for a new lunar lander, it sent shockwaves through the entire aerospace world. For months, everyone believed SpaceX's Starship HLS was the undeniable path to the moon, the crown jewel of the Artemis program. But now acting administrator Sean Duffy says SpaceX has fallen behind and NASA will allow new players to join the race. At first glance, it sounds like a simple decision, one meant to ensure progress. But behind that announcement lies a complex mix of politics, pressure, and priorities that could reshape America's return to the moon. Because the truth is, this isn't just a delay problem. It's a confidence test, not only for SpaceX, but for NASA itself. NASA's concern is clear. Deadlines are closing in fast. The current U.S. administration has made it a political goal to see boots on the moon before the end of its term. So when Starship's development slipped, as any ambitious engineering project would, NASA's patience started to thin. Sean Duffy's remarks weren't just technical updates, they were a signal. If SpaceX can't deliver soon, NASA must look elsewhere. And just like that, Blue Origin, Lockheed Martin, and Dianetics found themselves back in the spotlight. But let's be honest, these aren't new options. They're old competitors repackaging earlier ideas with new urgency. So the real question is, can any of them actually outperform Starship or is NASA trying to buy time and political cover? If anyone can claim deep roots with NASA, it's Lockheed Martin. They built Orion, the spacecraft meant to carry astronauts to lunar orbit. And long before SpaceX entered the scene, Lockheed had quietly proposed a single stage, fully reusable lunar lander designed for the Gateway Station. That design can carry four astronauts, stay on the moon for two weeks, and return without refueling. Its propulsion system relies on RL-10, derived engines burning liquid hydrogen and oxygen. Efficient, proven, and safe. In many ways, it represents a cautious engineer's approach. Steady, familiar, and technically achievable. But there's one major issue, scale. Lockheed's lander carries only one ton of payload. That's scientific gear, maybe a small rover. Meanwhile, Starship can deliver over 100 tons. That's not just a lander, it's a mobile lunar base. So while Lockheed's design is solid, it belongs to an earlier era of exploration, not the future NASA originally promised. Still, Lockheed's re-entry into the race raises eyebrows. It suggests that NASA may be prioritizing reliability and political optics over raw capability. Then comes Dynetics, a smaller but fiercely ambitious player. Their concept, the Alpaca Lander, looks nothing like Starship or Blue Origin's Blue Moon. It's compact, wide, and close to the ground, meaning astronauts can step directly onto the lunar surface without ladders or platforms. That practical design is appealing, but practicality alone doesn't win contracts. Dynetics' proposal faced serious hurdles. NASA flagged unclear design requirements. They submitted two different landers with overlapping missions. Their crew compartment didn't provide enough room for suits and life support systems. And eight critical technologies were still unproven just months before the first crewed test. So while Dynetics offered innovation, NASA saw risk. Even so, their broader vision, a commercial lunar economy, is forward-thinking. They plan to make the lander reusable, capable of carrying oxygen tanks, mining gear, or cargo for private missions. In the long term, that idea might be the seed for a real lunar economy, something NASA eventually wants. But again, there's a harsh reality. Concepts don't beat capability. And right now, only SpaceX has demonstrated hardware that actually flies, lands, and can be scaled. Despite the political drama, Starship remains the most advanced, and most misunderstood spacecraft in history. Yes, the delays are real,
but they're development delays, not design failures. Every test flight, even the explosive ones, teaches SpaceX how to refine its systems faster than any traditional contractor ever could. Let's look at the fundamentals. Payload, over 100 tons to the lunar surface. Refueling, in-orbit cryogenic refueling capability, a technology no one else is even close to testing. Reusability, the entire vehicle, not just parts of it, will fly again, reducing long-term costs dramatically. Engine technology, the Raptor engine, running on methane and oxygen, is one of the most powerful and efficient ever built. Production speed, SpaceX can build, test, and fly prototypes in months, something Lockheed or Dynetics can't match in years. And while NASA measures progress in milestones, SpaceX measures it in iterations. Each flight, each explosion, is a step closer to operational readiness. That's why, despite the criticism, Starship continues to evolve faster than any competitor. So why reopen the race if Starship is still ahead? Because NASA's challenge isn't just about engineering, it's about politics and risk management. If Starship encounters a major delay, NASA needs a fallback option to protect the Artemis schedule. Opening competition sends a message. We're not putting all our eggs in one basket, but make no mistake, SpaceX is still the basket that matters most. Behind closed doors, NASA officials acknowledge that Starship's potential far exceeds any rival design. Even if another company provides a short-term solution, only Starship can scale to a permanent lunar presence. It's the difference between visiting the moon and staying there. And that's the core of the debate. NASA wants to achieve a milestone. SpaceX wants to build a future. What's happening now may look like a setback, but it's actually a strategic reset. NASA is rebalancing political expectations while giving SpaceX breathing room to perfect Starship. By announcing new landers, they ease congressional pressure, yet keep SpaceX as the silent favorite. Some insiders even believe this is a calculated move to motivate SpaceX. Elon Musk thrives on competition. Every time a rival gets media attention, SpaceX responds by doubling its launch rate or revealing new breakthroughs. And it's already happening. The latest Starship test flights achieved controlled descent, engine reignition, and heat shield performance that exceeded projections. That's real, verifiable progress, not PowerPoint optimism. So while NASA keeps the stage open, SpaceX continues writing the script. The truth is, NASA's multi-contractor approach isn't about replacing SpaceX. It's about ensuring redundancy. If one system falters, another can step in. But in the bigger picture, these new landers aren't rivals. They're supporting characters in a story already dominated by Starship. Because Starship isn't just a moon vehicle, it's a planetary system. It's designed for Mars, for refueling depots, for building infrastructure in deep space. Lockheed and Dynetics are building landers. SpaceX is building an ecosystem. And that's what makes all the difference. So as NASA reopens the gates to new contenders, the question isn't who replaces SpaceX, it's who can catch up to it. Because while others prepare proposals, SpaceX is already testing the technology that will define humanity's next century in space. That's the part NASA and the world can't ignore. And that's the real takeaway. NASA's move isn't about replacing SpaceX. It's about testing whether innovation or caution will define humanity's return to the moon. What this means is simple. Starship remains the only system capable of turning lunar exploration into something permanent. Every delay, every test, every explosion, it's all part of progress. Because if SpaceX pulls this off, we're not just going back to the moon. We're learning how to stay there. And that changes everything. So what do you think? Is NASA making the right call by reopening the race? Or should it stay all in with SpaceX? Share your thoughts in the comments. I read everyone. If you found this breakdown valuable, don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to Space Hub and turn on notifications so you never miss the next deep dive into humanity's journey beyond Earth. This is Space Hub, bringing you real insights, not hype, about the future of space. Stay inspired, and I'll see you in the next video.